I, I spoke last week at a conference in British Columbia. It was a conference for investment people. It was a conference that had a thousand stockbrokers come to it. And they were all very interested in what 40 companies that had booths at this conference had to say. And I was asked to speak there. So I stood up and I looked out into the audience and there were suits, all suits, blue suits, black suits, pinstripe suits, beautiful suits. And I said to them, welcome to Reefer Madness 2014. You see, they were there to invest in the marijuana business. <laughs> and I said, in all of the beautiful suits, I love them. I love those suits. But every one of you sitting in those seats today owe those seats to people in orange suits who are sitting in prison today. I have friends in prison today who are doing 75 years for a ton of non-existent pot. They're inside prison, they're gonna die in prison. And they're looking out at all of these pinstripe suits about to make money on a product that they're all doing time for and will die in prison for. So I told those suits that it's their responsibility to shout from the mountaintops as they're making their millions, and they will, to get those people out of prison. Because if they don't do that, then they're rotten people. As far as I'm concerned, most of them are fairly rotten as it is, but you know, there's some good people who are making money today. I have some friends who have money and they're decent people. But money corrupts people. It makes them greedy. It makes them think that they need more. The United States has a company called the Corrections Corporation of America, which has recently offered to buy every state prison in the United States. Imagine private prisons making money off the backs of incarcerated people, most of them suffering from post-traumatic stress that's never been addressed. And there are companies making profit off their pain. And there are those same stockbrokers who I sat and talked with who have investments in that company, the Corrections Corporation of America. They offered to buy every prison in the United States, every state prison. And so here's how it works. I come to Ohio and I'll say, I'll buy that prison for $50 million and I'll take that one for $62 million. And it's a great windfall of cash for the states. And every state needs money. Every, they're all desperate. So it looks really good on the front of it. Their grandchildren, however, will still be paying for every prisoner that's housed in those prisons because then they pay rent, they pay a fee for every prisoner that's housed after that to the Corrections Corporation of America. That's all bad enough, but here's the worst part about it. There was one condition with the offer, and that condition was this, that they have to guarantee 95% occupancy for 25 years. Now that is about the worst thing that I could imagine. How can we change anything when we're building a corrections industrial complex that requires growth? How did they react in uh, Vancouver when you were there? And gave us the guys in the suits or whatever? They loved it. <laughs> they loved it. Did that surprise you? Or? Not really. They want the money. <laughs> and they, they, it's all they want, honestly. Mm -hmm. And they, I was introduced as the person who moved more marijuana than the entire room combined. <laughs> and so they wanted to know me. <laughs> what about when you brought up the prisoners? Though, they? they all kind of shuffled in their seats. But you know, there's another, there's a big one happening here in June, and I'm just, you know, building the words for it right now. Because it's their responsibility now. If they want to get in the game, then they got a, they got a, they got a job to do. And I'm going to shout it, and as long as anyone will listen, I'll shout. And actually, I, I've been given a pretty good platform in that industry right now to do that, and I'm going to do it.